Ladies and gentlemen, today is June 23rd, 2015, and this is The Kane Kale Show, episode 240, where we learn to be better artists. I am your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today is Tutorial Tuesday, and today what we are going to be learning is how to draw monsters, of course, better than these ones. I just made this for the the thumbnail on Facebook, and speaking of Facebook, before we get into the actual tutorial... We do need to take a stroll down a very special place, and that is, of course, the lovely Lane. You guys are so awesome. I love your work. I have the best Facebook page in basically the entire site. Let's just go ahead and establish that right now. In fact, probably the best in the entire internet. So if you want to go take a look at this uh, strangely scrolling uh, piece of artwork, <laughs> you can go check it out for yourself. Um, that tiny URL down in the bottom, right, backed by the friendly Facebook blue, you can go check out all these pieces for yourself, like the page, and hey, submit some of your own. Get featured on the show. Have me look at it and talk about how awesome it is on the pre-show. And with all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to itch my nose. Oh! And we're going to go ahead and get into the tutorial. Yes, and if you are wondering what some of these strange wrapped pieces are behind me, this is just remnants from the move. For those of you who don't know, recently moved. From uh, San Francisco, my girlfriend, I helped her move from San Francisco all the way back up to Utah. And this is just uh, remnants. That's actually a painting done by her. It's really freaking awesome. I'll show you guys uh, eventually when I get that unwrapped. All right. But that is another conversation for another time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get into our monsters. So as I said, uh, we are going to be following up from the tutorials from last week. We've been learning how to create armor. Armor, how fun is armor? Well, it's, it's pretty fun, but another thing that a lot of people might be asking is, okay, Keenan, well, you taught me about the, the design, your design theory, right? The small, medium, large, okay? And again, I'll say it, I said it once, I'll say it again. Small, medium, large, this is your design sense for everything that you'll create from now on because you are all professionals out there and I just taught you the secret. I taught you the secret of all the people. They don't want you to know this. They don't want you to know this, but I brought it to you. Every, all those professional artists, they hate me now because I taught you this one simple trick. Well, it's obviously more complicated than that, but it is something to be keeping in mind. And what we're gonna be doing today is creating monsters, creating creatures. So let's go ahead and get into that, shall we? So um, the reason that you would start doing this, and I'm just gonna start uh, just kind of doodling some shapes, okay? Start doodling some shapes that we can kind of work with, okay? So let's kind of start with one of these. Let's start with something like this. Remember those um, remember those special shapes that I taught you guys about that people like? We like teardrop shapes. We like diamonds. Good things to start with. Uh, let's do something kind of weird. Let's do something like, like that, okay? So here we have a few different shapes. Okay, so if we're going to be creating creatures today is let's go ahead and take these other shapes and get them out of the way for a second. So let's go ahead and move those over to the side and we'll take them, we'll pluck them one by one and we'll focus on them. But for right now, we're going to focus on this guy right here. We're going to focus on this guy right here, okay? So let's see what we can do with this. What, what can we possibly do with this? How do I go about creating monsters or how do I go about just creating creatures in general? Okay, well, first of all, what you want to do is you want to consider a couple things. Like, maybe do you want this to be the creature's head? Like, maybe he has, like, some eyes like this, right? And there's, like, another one sticking out on the side, and he's kind of like this derpy-looking worm thing, right? Is he going to look like this? All right? Is he going to be, like, some cartoony-looking worm thing? Or is this shape going to be just as easily? In fact, let's just go ahead and duplicate that. And this is what I want you guys to start playing around with, okay? Or could this shape be, uh, instead of the eye going there, could the shoulder go there? Like the arms kind of come out like this, and then you have like shapes like this. And notice, what I want you guys to notice more than anything is how rough I'm working uh, right here, okay? Working very rough. Maybe he has like a, like a face that comes down right here, and I'm going to start sculpting, okay? Sculpting, which is basically my term for taking the stylus, drawing a little bit, flipping it around, erasing away, okay? Maybe we'll do something like this. Maybe he has like some weird like hydralisk tail, so he has like this snaky tail that goes back like this, and he has a bunch of little leggy things, okay? And now what I'm going to start doing is um, you want to also make sure that you're working kind of small. I'm zoomed in here. But something that really helps is when you actually take your sketches, 
and you work with them small at first. Work with them a little bit smaller. Because what this forces you to do is it forces you to take a look at the overall piece, the overall structure and balance, okay? So remember what we were talking about, the large, small, medium. So here's an example of what you don't want to do. Let's say, hey, let's make them like a snake thing. Let's put these lines going through them at the exact, see how they're all the same exact space between them? Boring, right? This is boring. You don't want to do that. For the lines that are gonna go through your character, you wanna be thinking larges, mediums, and smalls. So let's say, hey, maybe there's like a stripe that comes up over the shoulder and goes down and meets the head, okay? Now, hey, look at that. We've got a large space right here. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up another uh, notes color just to show you. Large space, small space, medium space. Ah, brilliant, that's a great start. That's a really great start, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, okay? Now let's go ahead and say, maybe he's got like this, maybe like these shoulder pads or something like that. Maybe there's like some spikes that come out of them, okay? So again, sculpting that into place. And then another thing that I really like to do is I like to go through here and I like to add in like a little bit of value. Like this is me just pressing very lightly on my stylus to add in this value, sort of darken it in, bring out his silhouette a little bit more. And then what I can start doing is things like this. I can start adding in, let's say, hey, uh, let's draw his face like this. Let's add in some darkness here on his eyes and then kind of erase a little bit of a, a little bit of it away. Okay, so maybe we can do something like this. And then see how we immediately have a pattern in there? It could be scales, it could be a headdress, it could be this or that, you know? But let me go ahead and darken this a little bit because that'll make it a little bit easier to see as well. Yeah, there we go, there we go. And then very easily, like, I want you guys to think about this as like clay. This is how I really like to create creatures, okay? Let's say, hey, maybe he has like some hydralisk. Uh, I, I like hydralisk, obviously. So let's give him like those hydralisk mandibles. Well, instead of like sitting there and drawing out like, okay, well, it looks like this and that's like that. And then it like has like these teeth. And then we go in and draw those lines. See, and like, this is the hydralisk. Hydralisk is from Starcraft, right? There's your hydralisk, right? Instead of drawing with lines, what I want you guys to start playing around with is drawing with shapes, okay? So like lay in the shape of the jaw, then go back in there and say, okay, the teeth are going to be a light value. So we can go in there and do something like this. See how we can add those teeth back in there? And then we can do something like this. Okay, and you can kind of sculpt out like say like these lines and maybe like other lines for like eyes and see how we're starting to get a monstrous looking face in there, okay? So starting small, let's go ahead and put some other details in here, what we think we'll like, okay? Now one thing that I'm seeing right here, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. One of your best friends is going to be Control J, Control J, because whenever I'm about to make a change to something, I always like to just hit Control J which duplicates my layer. So that way, think of it as just like a delayed or like a super save state for all those people that play those emulators out there. So that way it's something you can always bounce back to because let's say, okay, well, let's give them like a hair, let's give them like a spiky hair thing going on up here, a mane. Actually, I kind of like that. I really like that. I was gonna do it as a joke, but I actually really like that space right there. And then like, say he has like a mullet, right? So this, the tail is now becomes like a mullet. Okay, but then you say, you know, I don't know if I want my uh, my monster to have a mullet. Oh no, but I don't have enough spaces in my history and it only takes you back to like right here and it still has like the hair pieces on it. Well, what you can do is look, you, oh, whoops, not that one. <laughs> you can go back to this one. But strangely enough, I actually like the mullet. I like the mullet, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And that brings me to my next thing, my next thing that I'm gonna talk to you guys about. And that is, my least favorite term in the art world, and that is happy accidents. Ugh, ugh, it just like pains me to say that because even though I hate happy accidents, even though I wanna take all the credit for everything that I do, uh, really when you're concepting things, you wanna consider that um, like you're just kind of flowing, right? I've talked about free drawing before and I've talked about uh, mental effort defeating itself whenever you're trying to create something. And this is no more apparent than when you are concepting things, because the more you try to think about, uh, the more you try to think about what you're doing, oftentimes th the more you're going to overthink it. You're going to overthink it and make it kind of, kind of crappy. You're going to try too hard. You're going to turn into a try-hard artist, and you don't want to do that. Okay, so none of that. 
Okay, so what I'm also gonna do here is I wanted to change the body from this. I wanted to make it a little bit bigger. So let's give him like a worm body. I'm really going off of this, this hydralisk thing. <laughs> it's just gonna be a different kind of hydralisk. Oh yeah, and also um, I always like to think of things to kind of get me started. Like, hey, I could sit here all night and try to think up uh, like a brand new monster, something that no one's ever seen before, or I could take something that's kind of been done pretty well and then kind of build off of that. In this case, hey, I really like the Hydralisk, so let's go ahead and do something kind of like that. But obviously, I mean, you don't want to blatantly rip it off. But something that's very similar is always good. Okay, so this is like our Hydralisk with hair and a slightly different kind of, uh, a slightly different kind of head shape, okay? So maybe for this Hydralisk, maybe instead of, um, you know, just like a head shape like this, maybe you'll have like big Cho'Goth horns or like big, you know, like big bull horns or something like that, right? And notice how I'm drawing it in and then watch, erase it out. Boom, baby, there, now he has horns. Because we're working with values. You see what we're talking about? We're working with values. We're not drawing perfect, um, this is how I use the concept stuff. It's like, okay, well, I want this hydralisk thing. So it'll be like this and there's like an eye and then there's like a horn there. And then, you know, it's like, you're working with lines here. But what I want you guys to, again, keep in mind is you can start with lines, but very quickly add in those values, add in those values, and then start to erase out, start to sculpt, okay? Sculpt, because this not only makes your characters look more believable and cool, but it also just really opens up your mind for, it opens the mind for uh, getting cooler ideas, okay? So let's go ahead and get this guy all set up. Let's give him like claw hands. Let's give him like, let's give him like big uh, pincers, yeah. Okay? And again, keeping in mind our thicks and thins. Thicks and thins was one thing that we went into a few uh, weeks ago where we talked about the coolness of having, so say like his shoulder piece is like really big, right? There's like this shoulder that comes down and then it goes into this tiny little, maybe this forearm, or it goes into this tiny little joint that will meet the forearm and then say maybe the forearm has like this big blade on it, okay? So I'm playing around with silhouette here, but I'm also playing around with thicks right here, thicks and thins and someone is texting me right now, I'm sorry, let me mute that. <laughs> but again, thicks and thins, don't forget them, okay? And you will live long and prosper. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this guy up. When in doubt, I always just kind of fill in shapes. I always just fill in these shapes. And then I go back to it later if I wanna say, okay, well maybe he just has a tail right now, but maybe I want him to have like these little, you know, uh, like centipede looking legs, I'll go back in later. I'll just kind of add in like little shapes again, because we're thinking with values, values. Always consider your values, okay? So there's step one, okay? So there's our lion mane hydralisk thingy. And you know what? I like it, I like it. I would give him a happy home. Let him eat all the Marines that he so deserves. <laughs> Eat all the Terran Marines that he so desires. And Protoss Zealots. Cool. All right, so there's number one. There's number one. Let's come up with a couple other ones. A couple other ones. Why not? Why not? Because I made another a slightly crucial mistake, and that was I got into the nitty-gritty a little bit too early, okay? So here's what another thing that I want you guys to consider is that I don't want you guys getting into the nitty gritty too fast, okay? I know I break my own rules, but you know what? It's my show, I can do that. So let's go ahead and move on to these other ones, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a more proper way, a more proper way before you get into the nitty gritty and adding all that detail in, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more um, of how to just play around with shapes and find, find balances keeping in mind our good old small, medium, large theory. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to that. Okay, so we're not gonna worry too much about getting into that nitty gritty. Right now we're just exploring ideas, exploring, um, 
our relationships, relationships, okay? So let's say maybe this could be, uh, again, I really like the shoulders being here. Maybe you could have like a little uh, head that's right there. And then let's go ahead and start adding in shapes, adding in shapes, okay? So let's say this is his head here. And you know what, I want this to be his mouth. I want this down here to be his actual mouth. So maybe he'll have like some teeth. Let's go ahead and add this in and let's go ahead and draw in those teeth. So he's got something going on like that, okay? Okay, then maybe he has these uh, legs that come out like this. And maybe he's kind of like a frog thing. He's like a frog. Yeah. Oh, you know, I want his back legs to be a lot smaller. Much cuter. Much cuter. So we'll give him like these big forearms, right? Big old forearms like the thing, like the monster out of Cloverfield. Yeah. Cool. All right. See, because we're thinking about bigs and smalls. Interesting how that works, does it? Is it not? The reason why smalls, mediums, and larges works is because it simulates nature. Now, obviously, there's not anything as freakishly uh, exaggerated as this creature, necessarily. Actually, well, I, you could argue that. You could argue that. Nature has some very interesting creatures, if you look closely. Um, but I would always, here's what I like to do. I always like to base it off of something base it off of something in nature. So for example, this is like a frog type creature. Um, but just because you're creating a creature doesn't mean you have to start with a creature. You know what I'm saying? I've heard other artists say they start with things like uh, like a bowl of pudding or like a weird, um, like basically like a bowl of Cheerios or like food items, like the seeds inside of a cut open uh, like uh, watermelon or uh, orange, like just looking very closely. Or another one is if you have uh, cottage cheese ceilings, look into the cottage cheese, stare deeply into the cottage cheese and you will see monsters. So because you just want to get your brain kind of going, not so much worrying about it looking exactly like something plausible, but you just want to start with something, start with something. And it doesn't have to always be, like I said, perfectly found in nature but uh, you just want something to get your brain going, okay? So once you're done with that, then like I said, do a little bit of line work, but then fill it in with your values and then go ahead and start erasing things out. And this will, like I said, start to give you ideas. Oh, this is interesting because these now look like eyes because of those shines on it. So maybe those could be eyes and this is now like a crazy mouth, you know? <laughs> maybe he has other teeth there, you know? And you can play around with things like that. Okay, but for this case, I'm gonna have this just still be the shoulders. I like that. And then keeping in mind our small, mediums, and larges, let's go ahead and add in a little bit more of that. I'll give him these eyes here. I like it. And then maybe some spikes, why not? Actually, spikes don't really go that well on him, do they? And whatever. When in doubt, put some spikes on it. That's what I say. That's what I always say. And when in doubt, use the transform tool to make up for the fact that you can't draw in perspective. <laughs> there we go. All right, so there's our second monster. And again, I broke my rule. We went to the nitty gritty too fast. Oh, I'm terrible. This is a terrible tutorial. Terrible. I ruined it. Ruined it. Oh, ruined it. Okay, let's get back to this. Next. And then I'll take a couple questions. I'm gonna very quickly lay these ones down. What can we start with on this one? Maybe we can have something like this. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Okay, so watch me build off of this. Watch me build off of this. So I'm really just trying to come up with something a good idea to get me started. Maybe I want something like this. Now this is what I'm talking about right here. See how I'm working very loosely with shapes and now I'm gonna start kind of pulling stuff out of it. Like maybe this is like a, this looks like a beetle guy, okay? So let's start with that beetle guy. OK, 
Okay, maybe he has like, or maybe it's like a big fly guy. So we'll have like eyes like that. Eyes like that. Let's go and erase this back out. There we go. Cute little fly guy. And I always like teeth. You guys don't always have to have teeth, but I always put teeth in for good measure. Cool, yeah, this one's already feeling a lot cooler. Kind of add in that value, erase away the value. There's a little shape in here that I like. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. Maybe this can be some sort of beard or something, I don't know. But again, don't worry about it making sense. Have you ever seen a fly with a beard? I think not. I think not. But now you do because you are a professional comic artist or concept artist and you do whatever the heck you want. You are the god of your own hand and you get to create whatever it is you desire. I'm going to move this guy over. All right. Oh, let's put him over there. Yeah, cool. Cool. Oh, yeah, and since he's a fly, let's give him multiple arms. I'm going to finish this one up. I will take questions, and then we are going to end today's show. Sticks and thins. There we go. Let's give him legs like this. <laughs> Yeah, cool, fun. See what I'm talking about? See like the big, thick upper body, thick upper body, tiny little legs. Very fun, very fun. Consider that. Oh, and don't they have like those little hooks on them? Let's give them those little hooks. Love it. I'm going to go ahead and dial him back a little bit. Cool. And there you have Fly Guy. Starting to take shape. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a very, spa very special point in the show where we like to take some questions via the question catapults. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please cast your questions over the castle walls and I will answer them. And in the meantime, we will go ahead and finish up our last monster. But I hope this helped you guys out. I hope just watching me kind of sh shine some light onto my creative process. Another thing that I really like to do is uh, personally, I feel that I can sketch better when I actually start, when I start uh, with physical media. So for example, I will have something basically just like this, right? Like a piece of paper. And then I will, I'm gonna go ahead and do this the best I can. Okay, so basically I'll take a piece of paper and I'll have a pen. It's very crucial that you have a pen or at least try it with a pen because I feel like it really helps. But I will start kind of like sketching like this. Oh wait, here, let me do it like this. You'll be able to see it better. All right, so I will start sketching like this shapes like this kind of like adding things on and see how you can already begin to see, uh, see, look, here's Velcaz. Here's the skin for Velcaz forming, you know? <laughs> you can already start to begin to pull out interesting shape uh, relationships, interesting shape relationships just by doing stuff like this. So usually what I end up doing is I start like this And then I'll actually take it into Photoshop. I'll actually copy it right into Photoshop. But the reason why I like doing it like this is because, um, again, your your mind is already set up with the fact of knowing that it can't erase. See, with Photoshop, I fall victim way too early to, or way too much into thinking that I can just erase something if I don't like it. Which is why I like it a lot more when I know that I can't erase stuff. 
So you can kind of shade stuff in, you can do all kinds of stuff. So just playing around with shape uh, ideas, okay? So there's an example. Uh, is really, really rough, but that's how I like to begin doing my sketches. Just because it's a lot easier to just kind of play around with shapes. Sometimes I'll even just straight up scribble and then look at what I can see in the scribbles. All right, guys, questions coming in. Um, Let's see here. Hmm. Keenan, uh, Tiger Nair saying, do you think art contests like the Heroes of the Storm one on DA right now are good or take too much advantage of the artist's submissions? Uh, that is a great question, Tiger Nair. Um, I, you could say like they kind of take advantage of, no, but what really actually bothers me more about that is not that they're taking advantage of artist submissions, is the fact that you have people that are already professionals working in the industry and they're like submitting stuff to those contests when you know it would be a really good chance for somebody you know that's looking to get some exposure to actually like enter the contest you know it's like dude you already got a job like like seriously it's like they complain about not having enough time to do personal work but then as soon as the contest is up they're like hey all of a sudden i have all this time to like make a submission for heroes of the storm i might as well i'll just i'll just go ahead and do that real quick you know but as far as the contract, I mean, really when it comes down to it is, you know, there's got to be something in it for the company too. I mean, they're putting on this contest, they're taking time to put it on for you, uh, you know, organize the prizes and all that. And, uh, you know, there's got to be something in it for them too. So if there's a really cool contest and they want to be able to promote it, say for another contest later in the future, which is usually what they use it for, they very rarely take artist submissions uh, on those contests and actually use them for their own commercial needs. I rarely ever see that. But um, to be honest, they're entitled to, you know, because you're drawing their own thing, it's in the rules, and if you don't like it, then you don't have to submit to it. So you know fully well what you're getting into, and so I think that's just where it ends. That's where the conversation ends. All right, next question coming in. Uh, Madness HD is asking, when you come up with a design, do you usually wing it? Do you normally have a set vision goal in mind? See, uh, that is a great question, Madness. And here's what I will talk about. See, here we're drawing monsters. And these are all just very random creatures, right? But usually what I have going for me is I kind of have, say I'm doing a visual update for a champion. I already know that, say, like we're doing one for Kog'Maw. Right? I already know that there's a few things that we really need to include with Kog'Maw, and that is like a giant mouth, right? He's got like six eyes, and he's got like these tentacle things coming off. So I can automatically start playing around with shapes like that, see? So I've already created something that's similar to Kog'Maw here. But now what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start playing around more with, say, like what really makes Kog'Maw himself, and how can we play that up? And how can we change it around a little bit? So let's say, okay, hang on. Let's make sure that this is on the right layer. Did I do it? Yes, I did. So let's say, okay, well, what really makes Kog'Maw awesome? Well, first of all, I really like his feet. So what if we made his feet bigger? What if we made his feet bigger and then his arms like super tiny, right? Does that look good? Maybe not. Maybe the fact is cool, or what's actually more cool about him is that he's more mouth. So let's actually go ahead and play this up. Let's make his mouth even bigger, okay? And then have tiny little arms and tiny little feet, you know? So we have something more like this. And let me make sure I read the rest of your question here. Um, oh, do you have a set vision and goal? Uh, because I find myself in a slump where everything I sketch just doesn't come out to my liking. Do I encourage references when in these states? Um, yes, that's another thing that I really like to do is that if you ever feel like you're in an artistic slump, I highly recommend just taking, like if you're designing like a futuristic armor, then pull up some references of advanced warfare or of uh, Pacific Rim, you know, something that's already been done where people have poured hundreds of thousands of dollars into it for a designer to come up with a design and start with that, start with that thing because Obviously, you know, you're not going to just blatantly rip it off, but maybe there's like a tiny little thing in there that you'll see. There's a tiny little thing in like the chest piece or like the way that now that you know this, now that you know this trick right here, I want you guys to look at it, look for it in professional work. You will find it a lot. And so then you'll be able to pick it out. You'll be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool how the armor design or like say the shoulder piece, it's like there's a large shape there and then there's these tiny little like wires or circuits going through it and there's a medium shape. 
whoa, that's so awesome. And then maybe that looks like a character's head. Maybe that looks like an armor plating that can go on a character's head, you know? So just take inspiration. And I highly recommend doing that. A lot of people talk about it like, oh no, it's, it's cheating or like, oh, well, I'm an awesome artist. So I don't need to do that. I'm an awesome artist. I can just think of everything in my head. I don't I don't need any references. I don't need any references. And to be honest, I used to be one of those artists. I used to be one of those artists that thinked uh, or that <laughs> thinked that used to think <coughs> that coughing was professional and that I needed to come up with everything on my own, okay? So, ooh, I really like this. This is cool. Um, but that is just not simply not the case. Okay, so, ooh, I really like this a lot. Oh, that's fun. That's really fun. Okay, let's give him like a pointed chin. Yeah, buddy. Kogma visual update right there. Check it out, people. Check it out. Boom, ship it. It's just ready to go in the game. You don't, you don't need to model it. No animations needed. Let's just replace it with a moving flat 2D picture of this. And there you go. All right, a couple more questions, and then we are going to end today's show. I also like his tail. I, I'd like it if they gave him more of a tail. That'd be cute. I want him to make a little bit more, make him a little bit more um, animalistic. Like maybe he runs on all fours a couple of times. I think that'd be really cute for Kogma. I love Kogma. Kogma is one of my favorite champs. I just, I love him. Along with Twitch. Twitch is really cool too. Um, but let's go ahead and get back to these questions. All right, uh, a couple more questions. <laughs> First Crab saying, where's Colton at? Oh, don't worry, Colton's around. He's streaming his own thing. You guys need to go check it out. Colton Cresser, if you guys do Twitch TV, Colton Cresser. He streams pretty often and he's got his YouTube channel up too, so go check that out. All right, <coughs> Rainbow Fi Rainbowfied Maya is asking, uh, what do you think about overlaying colors onto a grayscale drawing? I personally don't like to do that. I've showed you guys my uh, technique where basically I like to draw like this and then I will say darken it down and then I like to lay the color behind the character. Now the reason why I like to do this is for two reasons. Because with an overlay, you have to worry about say, okay, let's go ahead and create an overlay here. With an overlay, you're more thinking about the color almost like a film. You're thinking of the color as a film going over top and it kind of, see how it kind of like does like a color dodge effect? See how that makes it bright? And that kind of, it fiddles around with my colors a little bit too much. It's not as predictable. So I don't like to do uh, overlay layers as much, but rather what I like to do is I like to put my colors in front and then I will put my, or sorry, my lines in front my lines in front and then I will put my color behind it like this. Basically create a character mask. And Kogma has red eyes. Oh, look at that, we already got it. We already got it. So like that. But then what I like to do is I like to go in and I will color my lines. Okay, this is like the quickest freaking demonstration of this I've ever done. <clears throat> I'll go back in and I'll color my lines, okay? And it's very subtle here, but you can probably see it more if I do it like this, okay? See, I'm coloring my lines. Now this softens them and gets them ready for overpainting. Ah, overpainting. Oh, and you can also like lay in um, shading effects as well. So you can go in and kind of like shade this, shade that. See, now we're starting to bring some more uh, depth into our character, more depth into our character like that. Oh, let's go ahead and put that shine back on there. Yeah, and then what I like about that is that everything has been predictable up to this point. The color that I put down is the color that I'm gonna get. And then it starts me up for overpainting. So I can go in here and just do one of these things. I can uh, make his eye look like it's glowing. You know, basically now it's like whatever I say goes as far as colors, okay? I can start kind of sculpting things out, cleaning things up, and making our good old Kagis look nice and cute. All right, so that's the way that I like to do it. That was a really quick explanation of it. But if you're curious about my, my process in depth, 
go onto my YouTube channel and just type in adding color to a grayscale portrait. If you type that in the search bar, that'll give you a really good in-depth thing for how I like to go about coloring from black and white. All righty, people. So with all that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and end today's show. Thank you guys so much for joining me live on Twitch. We did not drop many frames today, and that makes me oh so happy. But This will be on YouTube in a short little while. Before I go, I would like to say thank you so much to my awesome sponsors, a.k.a. the Defenders of the KNKL Kingdom, Mitchell Tummers, David Cariello, and Laura Bashir. Thank you guys so much. These are my sponsors from my good old Patreon. If you would like to support the show yourself and get awesome goodies, then head on over to Patreon. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, that link down in the bottom right, click that. It'll take you over. You can get my PSDs. Oh, yeah, this PSD will be uploaded onto Patreon. You can download it. And, uh, yeah, I upload all my PSDs, past shows, and lots of other cool goodies. So, yeah, go check it out. And for those of you in Twitch, don't worry, I'll post... I'll post the link to the Patreon so you can go check it out too. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that, we're going to go ahead and end. Like I said, thank you guys for joining me. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Got an awesome, thoughtful Thursday planned for you guys. Until then, you guys take care.